What's up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today we have a super exciting video because today we are going to be talking about resume advice. So some tips and advice that I have learned throughout the years from applying to internships in high school and college and applying to full-time jobs post-grad. So if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Rachel. I graduated from UC Berkeley in the class of 2020 where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. And now I'm currently working full-time at a law firm. And also, if any of you watching are interested in college, college application, or post-grad career advice, definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting. It's a team of UC Berkeley graduates who specialize in reviewing college application essays, as well as consulting one-on-one -on -one with students and parents. So definitely check out the website and all of the social medias for more information, tips, tricks, and and advice. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So starting off, I'm going to go over some of my biggest tips, general advice for creating and drafting your resume, and then after that we'll go into a resume example and pointing out some things that I would personally change with the example. So my first general advice would be to use action verbs in bullet points. You want each of your points to be specific action items that add value to your resume. You know, you don't want them to be super vague or to be sort of useless words on your page that don't add value, that don't give the reader, the hiring manager, any new information about you. So with that an example, you might say that you let a team, but that's sort of a weak word. Leading a team doesn't really share too much with the person reading your resume, so you want to use a stronger verb than just led a team. So you may say that you oversaw a team of X number of people over X number of months or years to create some kind of end product. So in your bullet points, you do want to be specific. You want to give quantifiable information so that the reader can really see and visualize and learn what you were doing at your previous jobs or experiences. So in your bullet points, trying to give numbers that quantifiable information when possible is useful. I'll have a website resource linked in the description of a website that lists a bunch of action verbs so that you can make your resume stronger. My next tip would be to have your resume in a single column format. There are a ton of resume templates online that you can look up. Personally for me and from what I've seen with different kinds of resumes, having a two column format, which I'll try to insert on the screen an example of a two column format. The two column format is just sort of hard to look at. It looks a little bit disorganized. It distracts your eye because you're looking at the one column and then you're looking at the other column where in a resume that is a single column format, you're you're looking at it vertically, you're reading it, and your eye is drawn to the main points on the page rather than being distracted with the left column or the right column. So I personally would have the single column format so that everything is in that one column. You stick your name and all of your information at the top and then you go into the meat of your resume rather than sticking your name, contact information in a column and then having the meat on the other side. The next tip is an easy and small fix, but by doing this, it will make your resume more professional. I would say you should have consistent verb tense throughout your resume. Resume. So in my first point when I was talking about action verbs to describe the things that you have done and your different work experiences, volunteer experiences, you want to have that all in the same tense. So whether it is present tense or past tense, you can pick one and then keep that throughout your entire resume. So don't switch from managed a team past tense to in another bullet point you're saying presenting on XYZ. 
present tense. It just looks a lot more cohesive if you keep everything in one verb tense rather than switching it back and forth, and I feel like consistent verb tense is a thing in like English essays as well. You don't want to switch between present and past tense in those kinds of essays, similarly for your resume. Another piece of advice that I have would be to not include an objective statement, but to save your objective statement paragraph for a potential cover letter. So an objective statement, it's sort of like a mission statement of why you want this job, why you're looking for a job, that some people stick at the top of their resume to give a little briefer into what they are looking for in this position. Personally for me, I don't really think the objective objective statement adds much useful information to your resume, I would save the space, leave the reasoning off your resume, and leave it for a cover letter or an email with the HR representative so you can save space on your resume because the resume is so short already you don't need to waste four or five lines on an objective. So for my next tip, if you're applying to a lot of large companies, it is probably the case that these large companies are using using AI automated review to quickly speed through all of the resumes that they're getting and searching for keywords that if your resume doesn't contain enough keywords, you will get automatically rejected versus resumes that do contain a bunch of keywords would get invited to the next round. So I feel like a lot of large companies do that. For smaller companies, they may still do that depending on the number of applicants' resumes that they're getting. But if it is a smaller company, then maybe a human HR rep is actually looking at the resumes. But including keywords into your resume is super useful, and so by that I mean looking at the job description that's posted and seeing, okay, what are some of the main words that they're using to describe this posting, and then including those words in your resume so you would pass some kind of AI automated keyword check, or also if a human is looking at it, they'll see, oh, this person might be a good fit for the job, let me recommend them to do a phone screen or interview because a lot of their prior experiences align with what we're looking for for this current experience. So really, whether it is an AI review or a human review, it is important to look at that job description and then include some of the main words that they're using in that job description in your resume, whether you're adding those words as the different action verbs for your bullet points, or if you have a skills section and you're adding those words into your skills section. And finally, my last general tip would be to keep your resume simple. These resumes are probably being skimmed super, super quickly, so you really want to keep it as simple as possible, as easy to read as possible, while also getting your main messages across. You don't want your resume to be so bulky that it's hard to read, your eye is drawn to many different places, it's just an ugly or confusing resume, so just keep it simple, make it as easy to skim as as possible because chances are the people aren't reading your resume word for word for word, but they're probably skimming through it to catch those keywords, to catch your experiences. Are they related to what you're applying to? Do you have transferable skills to the job that you're applying to? So those were some of my main general advice tips for the resume and creating your resume. And so now I'm going to stick an example on the screen and we can walk through some of the things that I would change and edit with this resume on the screen. So with this example resume, the biggest thing that I see right off the bat is that there looks to be a lot of white space, which this isn't necessarily a bad thing because the white space makes it easy to read, but because there is so much white space here, it sort of looks like their resume is lacking. So trying to format your resume so that there's less white space or also adding more bullet points to fill up the page so that there's less breaks between all of your lines and there's less white space in between your sections here. So with too much white space, I would definitely say that you can take advantage more of your layout on this page. So right now everything is all bounded left, 
but you can have things that are on the right side of the page as well on the right boundary. For example, for like this experience section at the top, you might have like Walmart listed there, but then you might stick your dates of employment on the right hand side of the page so that your eye is drawn to the name of the company and then you see, oh, how long have they worked here? So by doing something like that, it will take up this white space. So you sort of fix two problems with one, you can get rid of some of this white space while also making more use of the page that you have at hand. I would also say that this font on the resume is sort of hard to read. I would stray away from any kind of curly looking font. Italics can be used for certain parts of your resume, but you really want to stick to a standard font, no kinds of fancy, cursive looking fonts, anything like that. Online, it says that the top eight fonts for your resume are Arial, Cambria, Calibri, Garamond, Georgia, Helvetica, Times New Roman, and Veranda. So with fonts, you really want a font that is super easy to read. People are skimming it. If it's hard to read, it's going to be more difficult for the person skimming it and reading it. So you can Google the popular fonts, the good fonts to use for your resume and stick to those ones. Don't try to get fancy with it and add a bunch of random fonts. Another edit I would say for this resume is to add bullet points. So like for their experience duties, they just listed it all out. I personally think it's easier to read when things are bullet pointed rather than a long list of your duties. But if you separated those out to bullet points and then added more information, then it will fill up your resume more rather than just saying front desk, clerical assignments, food beverage distribution. Split those out into different bullet points to give more information. And finally, with this resume, like I was just talking about with the bullet points, when you split all of your duties out into separate bullet points, then you can give more information. So what does the front desk mean? What does clerical assignments mean? What does food beverage distribution mean? You can give so much more information about talking about what you did at the front desk. Did you answer phone calls? Did you respond to emails? How many daily guests did you interact with every single day? That kind of thing giving more information, especially if you're applying to some other kind of customer service job. You have the Walmart job that is customer service, the hospital job, and then it looks like the mountain ranch job is more with animals, but that also is customer service. So if this person were applying to another customer service position, it would be great to emphasize all of your skills from your previous experiences in customer service. So yeah, those were some of my general resume tips and walking through an example resume. So if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below. And if you have any videos that you want to see me do, definitely also leave a comment below. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Thanks so much again, and I will see you all next time.